What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Big Six Podcast, CBS Sports Daily NFL Podcast. I'm Will Brinson. I'm your host. It is Wednesday, October 20th, and that means two things. One, happy birthday, Mom! And two, it's a Brady Quinn football show! Pew, 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 pew. I am so fortunate that I get to spend this show sharing your mom's birthday with you. I mean, I got to be honest with you. This show would not be possible without your mom. That, so, is, that, is, Mama, that is true. And Mama my dad. Brinson, Mama Brinson, Mr. Brinson, thank you very much for making sweet, sweet love. Uh, on, come on now. Come 40 on. 40-some years ago. I, mean, I don't know if it was in the back of a truck. Or hey, where hey, it was. hey, 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 hey. Thank you so much. Hey, hey. For my conceiving, family listens to this podcast. Come on, for, man. For conceiving this man, Will Brinson, because he has been an absolute shining light in my life, and I'm sure many others. So thank you for that passionate night of like, heavy <laughs> right, breathing right. and so forth. Yeah. Uh, you are feeling frisky today. By the way, uh, I, yeah, I don't know if I, I don't know about thanking my dad on, on my mom's birthday because most of the time on my mom's birthday, uh, my dad, who's a big hunter, uh, will find himself in another state with a large rifle in his hand, uh, firing at some sort of quasi exotic uh, you know, wildlife. As he should, as he should. You know, you know who would get along? Bob and Choppa. Yep. 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 Uh, anyway, so I asked you, I had one very important question for you. When you broke your finger, and by the way, I would like to thank you for that, the story about your finger, because I was able to use on multiple radio hits, like a, a free plug for the podcast. Said, hey, yeah. you know, Br- Brady had this happen. Here's the recovery time. Obviously, Russell it's Wilson. kind of crooked still. Still kind of crooked. See how it like kind of goes up and then it's like kind of crooked. Yeah. Uh, if you want to see what Brady's finger looks like you could do that on youtube youtube.com slash pick six go there and hit the subscribe button and if you want to lurch for when we go live hit that little uh hit that little uh um the alarm bell thing next to it yeah and uh and you'll get an alert and while you're there if you're watching if you are currently watching on youtube hit the like button for the video please it helps us a lot if you're watching on youtube just press the like button like all it just boop that's all it takes. And, uh, you know, we appreciate it. Just, just don't break your finger doing it, you know? Be careful, you know, That's right. touching that thing. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, we have not figured out how to go live with the pick show on Thursdays yet, 1 p.m. Uh, that is directly because of Pete Prisco's inability to properly manage uh, modern technology. So maybe we'll eventually do that. We'll see. We should also point out, if you leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, we are going to do a Super Friends mailbag soon. So go to Apple Podcasts. I know I'm asking people to go all these different places, but at Apple Podcasts, leave a five-star review with a question attached. can be a team, trade question, fantasy question, Brady Quinn question, whatever you want, we'll answer it. And one more thing. We're going to do, oh, no, we're not doing a giveaway again. Sorry. That was the, that was the old recap. I was, I was jumping, I was leaping into my, uh, my rundown that I got signed out of and had to sign back in. We're going to talk divisions, but before we do that, Actually, you know what? We'll start. We'll, we'll do divisions, but we're going to – maybe we'll – Devo, can I, can I go any direction I want here? Do you care? Come on. Let, let's just get into what we were talking about before the All show. Right, I was going right? to try well, to make an MC get, West question, get, but my, no, I want no, to no. know is when you broke your finger back in your, so, your second season in the NFL, just two starts in, unfortunate, you know, an unfortunate timing situation, of course, on Monday Night yeah. Football against the Bills, yeah. and you had surgery. The next week after surgery, did you go out and run – fake handoffs in, in warmups and operate a fake huddle with fake teammates, imaginary teammates. And then despite being on injured reserve, go out for the coin toss before overtime. Uh, no, uh, no <laughs> to all of the above. Um, I, by the way, so I was young. I, uh, I had, I got stitches in the back of my head when I was really young, like seven or eight years old. Uh, that surgery where they put, uh, pins in my finger was really kind of my first surgery that I can ever recall of your life. So yeah, of my life. And I was what, 22, 23 years old. So at that point, it was more of like recovering from the surgery, the drugs, the, the anesthesia that they put in your system, all that, um, dealing with, I'd like never broken a hand, broken an arm. I'd broken some bones, my foot, but like nothing casted. So it was, it was just a weird experience altogether. I didn't feel it was necessary at that point, given that I was, I was put on IR. We had six weeks left in the season. The pins for me, I had two pins put in and they, they had to stay in for six weeks. 
So there was no chance I was going to be able to come back and play. So for me, no, uh, there's a lot more, you know, just kind of trying to help out the team in whatever way I could more mentally uh, than, than running out there in some sort of imaginary way. Um, I, I don't know. Maybe Russell Wilson has a sixth sense. Maybe he was out there with, I don't know, a ghost or something. It was Halloween theme. It was a look. Or, I think or, that, hear, or, and hear me out. Maybe there were just cameras on a national television game and he wanted to be seen. Right. Which is, th- this is the, <laughs> this is the interesting thing about it is if he wanted to do it without there being cameras around, he could have done it way earlier in the day. He could, he could have gone there earlier in the day and done it before the cameras really get set up, right? Being a part of a broadcast, the camera crew gets there, you know, maybe four hours ahead of time or three hours. They're in meetings and whatnot. They're really not going to start filming stuff until about two and a half, maybe, maybe three hours. So if he wanted to, he could have gotten there early, could have done it before all of that or done it in the ballroom at a hotel. There's typically enough room for all that. Uh, it's just, you know, I, I think whatever flack he gets from it, unfortunately, like it kind of, it kind of feels like he did it to be seen and all that stuff. And, and, you know, I, I'm not really sure. I don't know. I, I'm not really sure what he was trying to do by it, to be honest with you. I, it's, look, it I came off, it came off very JJ Watt esque. It was very JJ yeah. Watt esque. Yeah. Russell and JJ are both like that. Um, I find Russell's to be, it's weird. I find Russell's to be way more annoying than, than JJ's. I think JJ's a little more normal, like uh, sort of Russell's is like a weird, like I want to be a brand legend. Like he's like, I don't want to be great. I want to be legendary. It's like, yeah, I don't know. We can settle for great. Well, great would be good. I guess that's, I guess that's why I don't have the drive to be an NFL quarterback is because I just. Okay. I on this subject, this, this, this came up uh, earlier today on radio, Russell Wilson. Okay. At this point in his career, would he rather have another Super Bowl or an MVP? And Ooh, I'll, I'll give you my answer after this. If you could only have one, which would you rather have at this point? I think that your answer, I think that Russell Wilson's answer would be Super Bowl. I think that Russell Wilson's answer, if you jabbed him full of truth serum and didn't have him in a public setting, would be MVP. Because, right. and he might even just settle for a Super Bowl appearance and an MVP vote. <laughs> like one vote would be fine. I, I, I think that Russell Wilson, and maybe, you know, I mean, maybe this is to his detriment that, because Tom Brady doesn't think this way, I don't believe. Russell Wilson wants to be the greatest of all time instead of wanting to win for his team, right? Don't you think we're there? I think, so you mentioned it earlier, legendary, right? What does legendary usually coincide with? Hall of Fame. And I would say this right now, if you look at, Eli Manning and Matt Ryan, Matt Ryan, who has an MVP, but no Super Bowl. Yep. Eli Manning, who doesn't have anywhere close to an MVP, no. but has won two Super Bowls. Right. Um, and, and I, you know, if you're comparing those two resumes, which one do you think without a doubt eventually gets out to me? It's Eli Manning. Yes. It, uh, Eli Manning, Eli Manning has retired. Matt Ryan is not um, the stats. Are, but, I think, uh, but I'm saying no, you, no, like, right? if, if right Matt now, Ryan Matt Ryan wouldn't get in, I don't believe. But Eli Manning is getting in the Hall of Fame. Right. Matt Ryan, if he had won a Super Bowl and traded his MVP for a Super Bowl, he's, he's going to get in the Hall of Fame. Correct. Like, like, to me, there's, like, no debate on that. Correct. Right now, it's, it's only debatable because he hasn't won that Super Bowl. So you can kind of see the connotation, or I guess the correlation between winning Super Bowls and what that means for Hall of Fame and what that would mean for him to be a legend or legendary, right? Yeah. So I think because he's won a Super Bowl, he's been to two, I think at this point, he's thinking to himself, like, if I want to be legendary, I would probably need to be viewed as the MVP of the league at some point because I've already got the Super Bowl. Now, I think Russell Wilson's in the Hall of Fame regardless. Yep. But I, I still think when you look at, like, what's on the horizon from the rest of his career and what he's trying to accomplish, like, yeah, you can always say, well, if I went to win a Super Bowl, that obviously I'm playing as one of the better quarterbacks in the league, so maybe the MVP comes along with it. Um, but that's not always how it works. It's not always the case. Sometimes it doesn't work. You're not quite as lucky in the playoffs and things don't work out like that. But again, the last, the last I, MVP to win, the, win the Super Bowl was John breach tells me this all the time. And I always forget it was, um, it was a pay. Oh, uh, it can be Peyton. Cause that when he won the Super Bowl that year, he wasn't, mm-mm. it may have been. Oh God. Uh, uh, Why it, is it so hard to remember? It's uh, it's, it's a, it's kind of a, it, maybe it's, is it Tom Brady? 
No. Well, I'll, uh, this is terrible podcasting, by the it way. It is terrible podcasting, up, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's but, Tom Brady, but it could be wrong. So, I, so yeah, I think you see my point with all this is like he probably wants something that he's never had, something that's mm-hmm. going to kind of cement more of his legacy at this point. But I, I think it's interesting only because it seems like he's, you know, really concerned about that. Oh, at this uh, point you know what? We're wrong. I'm sorry. I, I remembered it. It's my fault. It's it's Kurt Warner in '99. That's crazy. It's crazy. That long ago? Yeah. Golly. Well, that makes sense then. Tom, so, okay, Brady, so can- Tom, Tom Brady's won it three times since then. Peyton Manning's won it three times since then. Patrick Mahomes has won it once. Cam Newton, Aaron Rodgers has won it twice since then. That's crazy. I'd love to know how many made it to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, but, so, a, a, so, a lot so of them you have. get my point. Yeah. You get my point, right? Yeah. Like you have to be, I think, in his mind, in order to be legendary, viewed as the best player of that position in the league at least at some point right i mean think about the fact that you know mahomes has one and he's got a super bowl lamar jackson has an mvp you make the case maybe he's playing at that level now like you can start making the case for a lot of guys i think that's where he'd like to add on that to his resume and and that's what's interesting about it to me is when you think about all the stuff he's trying to do it seems very i don't know ethnocentric is the way of putting it but it seems like it's very focused on what he needs to do what's best for him you know, in order to put himself in that position, like in the Pacific Northwest, you kind of get lost, man. Like sure. you know, all that timber out there. And it's, it's like everyone, you're like screaming across the coast. Like, Hey, look at me, look how I'm playing, look what I'm doing. But no one on the East coast hears you, you know, and like no, no one sees it as much. So when you have an opportunity like that in a prime time spot, yeah, I guess you, you take the chance to like, let people know like, Oh yeah, I'm still here. I'm rehabbing, but I'll be back this season. And I'm trying to win another Super Bowl because the MVP obviously is out of the conversation for him given how many games he's going to miss. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Let me ask you this, and we'll get to the NFC West odds or or some other division odds in a second, but I do think this Russell Wilson... Who cares about that? This is is an interesting topic because it actually just did um, Bill Barnwell's podcast, which will come out uh, sometime on Tuesday or maybe Wednesday. Oh, Billy boy. Yeah, but we were talking about about this, and I asked the question, I asked Bill the question while we were going back and forth about it. Do you think that this injury... And the state of the Seahawks roster, because he had mentioned that one of the he does a trade deadline piece and he was going to Dwayne Brown was somebody he was, you know, trade, right. trade for every team or whatever. Um, if you know, the Seahawks, he's 36. They should probably consider trading Dwayne Brown to get some assets for him if they think they're not going to be good this year. But then if you do that, does that help along with his injury and the Seahawks failures? Does it help push Russell Wilson out the door or into a trade demand situation this offseason? I think it depends what you get back in return. Yeah. Um, if it's all players that are building around the offense and building around him, probably not. I think if you actually talk to him too about like this whole deal, like, Hey Russ, what do you think? Right. Like almost like LeBron when he was in Cleveland or other places. I mean, Aaron Rodgers has talked about wanting that in Green Bay, um, you know, Bruce Arians and, and, you know, looking at how they operate in Tampa and talking to Tom Brady, Hey, give Gronk a call, give Antonio Brown a call. Hey, talk to these guys, make sure we all sign everyone back. I, I think if they come to him, and help him feel like he's a part of it, it probably feels different, right? Like, regardless of who they end up bringing in, even if it's, if it's like defensive players, it probably feels like, hey, this, this team's invested in me. Like, they're giving me a say in all this or doing some things that, like, I want to do. So I think that plays a role, uh, to be quite honest with you, if they were to make that trade, as far as just his input on it, regardless of what they get back in return. I, I don't know if it signals anything, but I think if they keep that on the outside, looking in and you know they make a trade it's for all future draft picks and it's like dude i'm trying to win now how does this help me win now and they might say well look how good we've been in the draft he might say really have you been good on the offensive line like how's that worked out for me right so i think there's a lot of questions that could come from it depending on how they handle it and honestly looking at the it's a weird spot to be in for seattle because the other thing i said to bill was that if you look at their roster you know in terms of appreciating assets like assets that are still gaining in value right there's only like one or two pieces and dk metcalf dk metcalf was the like, one that i came up with bill throughout um as well uh daryl taylor but obviously suffered a, a nasty heard, scary, yeah he, scary all right yeah um i mean you know bobby wagner's a stud russell wilson's a stud they're old dwayne brown's old tyler lockett's it was drafted in 2015 you know they're trying out alex collins like at running back it rashad penny doesn't look like he's going to be the guy and he was their former first round pick Jamal Adams 
is a young, uh, like very studly player at his position, but given the contract they gave him and the two first round picks, it's hard to justify that being a, an appreciating asset relative to what their, their, their cost was. No, I mean, and, and again, that, that's all part of it, right? Like as far as looking at your surroundings and looking at what you have in your roster and trying to get an idea of like how you want your career to end. I don't know that Russell Wilson feels like he's that close to the end of his career. I think he's oh. one of the guys who's advocated for playing into his, you know, forties. I, I think you can you know. reasonably say that Russell Wilson has seven plus years of good football left. Given the way he takes care of his body. Yeah, I mean, look, right. Like, like we don't know, right? Like, like the next longest starting streak now currently in the NFL is Tom Brady. Right. So <laughs> it, it just goes to show you like how absurd is that? It started back when he was 39. So we say we say that now, but Russell Wilson had the longest streak, starting streak. Now it's Tom Brady, and he's that started when he's thirty nine. So like, I'm not saying never say never anymore with the way this is all worked out. Okay, like yeah. this this kind of brings on a separate subject, but I'm going to bring it up because it's you know it is what it is. I was talking with an NBA player because they're getting ready to start their season. There's a lot of discussion and talk about the vaccine, et cetera, and, and there's some some players who are hesitant to take it sure. for various reasons, and one of the things they said to me, he goes, you know, there's some guys I know that literally, and these are high price, like max value contract players. They spend a million dollars on their bodies a year, training, nutrition, all that. And you're going, wait, what? A million dollars? Yeah. And then so you're going, more than that. Yeah. Well, and he might've been one of those people, but the, the point is this, it's like, if you're spending that much money on your body, and you've got some reservations about what you're putting into it. Like, I, I get that. Like, like, I don't that's, think it's that's like, actually uh, the best uh, <laughs> athlete doesn't want to take vaccine case I've heard yet. It's like, listen, right for, I am in total control of everything funneling through my body. And you want me to go to like the Harris Teeter and get and get a random. I, I, I mean, I, that's that's not in, di, poor D, Diva. For, <laughs> for all I know right now, for all I know, like he might be trying to concoct his own vaccine that's like a, some sort of super vaccine or the nba players are like coming together to create their own like special one i don't know but i'm just saying like i can see that point of view like where you spend that much money on your body and your well-being for performance and health it's like well yeah i can see how you have reservations then yeah, like, that's, I, you probably, I think that's an interesting and you probably don't put a tic tac you probably don't put a tic tac in your mouth right without how many want to eat tomatoes exactly which <laughs> like I mean, God, I love a good caprese salad, you know? Oh, like, who no. doesn't? And mushrooms? Oh. You want to eat mushrooms? Well, I won't eat mushrooms either. Yeah, that's, okay. just, that's weird. Well, I mean, between... you can put them in a marsala sauce. I'll have a nice chicken marsala or veal, you know, but uh, I'm not going to right, Okay, but the, but the tomato thing is weird. Like a real fresh it's summer weird, tomato? It's weird. Some mozzarella? Oh, it's a Well, it is a fruit now. It is a fruit, which is... I, I'm going to be honest with you. It kind of, that kind of spoiled tomatoes for me in general. Like it, once I, I heard we started calling it a fruit, I was like... Uh, yeah, I, I would, I would, I agree with that because you know you like to think ah, I'm a vegetable, get my vegetables, eating the tomato. Um, yeah, but, like hey, dude, I don't like a lot on a salad. That was like one of the only things I like. Now you're telling me it's a, uh, it's a fruit. I'm like, I don't like fruit in my salad. This is weird. But I will say this: an impromptu fruit draft broke out on the Pick Six podcast the other night. Don't I don't I don't know why. I don't know how. I but, can see that. Yeah, but to make sense. With, yeah, and I, uh, I, I snagged tomato with the the third pick in the first round. Knowing that those high. guys might not realize it. Very versatile fruit. Uh, was it like a knockout league? Or what kind of impromptu draft was it? I mean, I, I would have left tomato out there for a while. If you're comparing it to fruit, I think there's a lot of fruit we could throw it ahead of. Just being yeah, I probably should have waited on tomato thinking that Breach and, and Wilson wouldn't have figured out to draft tomato. Yeah. Like um, that, that's going to be that's going to be that's going to be it's going to be out there for a while. All right, it's going to be like me that. dropping in 2007. Like it's going to be there at the 22nd pick, you know? Oh, wow. Wow. What a, uh, what, a, what a you're feeling it today. I love it. All right. Let me ask you this. I guess this is like kind of personal and I think your answer will be no. Um, let's say that you because what are you? 30. I'll be 37 shortly. Okay. Yeah. 37. Ooh, birthday coming up. Very excited. Um, it, so you'll be 37. Let's say you're still playing in the NFL and you're approaching 40. And you, because of modern medicine, you have met up with a trainer that is like, hey, man, look, I can do all this cool stuff. We can do all this cool stuff. And I have this incredible blend of high octane performance enhancing undetectable things. Would you take it or no? Um, it's a tough question only because at the quarterback position, I don't think I'd need it. Oh, if I was right. coming off an injury, 
uh, that would view that differently, you know, um, and, and just to just to see if there was some things that I felt like I needed that I wasn't getting. Uh, that would probably be something I'd contemplate if it was coming back from injury. I'll be honest with you now. I, I think one of the things that's happening is, you know, there's these thresholds. You know what I'm getting tests. at here, right? You know what I'm getting at, right? Yeah, right, right. But but I'll just explain something to you. So there's a threshold, right? Where they test you for, you know, the, the HGH, testosterone in your body and all that stuff. And at a certain threshold, it triggers, you know, a, a positive test, if you will, right, from the blood or – um, if, if you find something, your urine sample is obviously a little bit different, but what is happening now is players somehow, I'll just put it that way, are finding themselves right at that threshold, right? If that's the line, right? Interesting. Right at the threshold all the time. And <laughs> permanently at the threshold. Permanently there. And from, you know, from, from you September can, to January. You can debate, you can debate like whether or not you know, you consider that illegal if you're supplementing something to keep you there at that level, that's not illegal uh, or that's artificial. But that is one thing that has helped players kind of fly under the radar with some of it. Mm. Uh, But there's all sorts of stuff out there that players, you know, are taking that they're not able to find on tests. I mean, that's been the case for 30 for years over a decade yeah yeah i mean I, I, maybe 30 but i think it's become much more sophisticated probably in the last couple of decades oh, oh for sure for sure i was sort of just thinking back to barry bonds is basically what i you know well the dead giveaway there though was his head grew to the yeah. size of a watermelon correct yeah it started it started off as like i mean barry know, bonds the, barry bonds the pirate was like your size and barry bonds the giant right. was like a giant size it was like there was like a second head of mine right next to it right <laughs> Or, or I'll put it this way. It'd have been like Pete Prisco because he had a really small little head and then like my head at the end because I've got a big head. So like <laughs> Barry Bonds at the beginning was Pete Prisco. And then by the end of his career, it was my size head. Yeah. Which even then he's got a, he, he wears like, what does he wear? Like eight and a half or whatever it is. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, and, and, and Pete, were, Pete wears like infant hats. Like you can a four, find a four new, and a half. You could, you could find a newborn baby and you're going to wear the same snapback size as Pete Prisco. <laughs> you certainly can uh yeah i guess i was just sort of thinking about we i was having this discussion with friends about how he one of my buddies had read an article um had read an article about how like basically everyone in hollywood and not you know athletes like just celebrities you know they have all this money and they put a bunch of it into uh tr- like training regimen people do mix up these cocktails that just keep them healthier for longer and better looking for longer and it was just not, it's something that probably wasn't better, happening. better looking for longer. Yeah. I mean, some of us are all natural, you know, I mean, basically you're you're pumping yourself full of designer steroids is what they're doing. And I feel like because of the, because of your, too, but the point is because this stuff is so far advanced compared to what it was like, you know, when Mark McGuire's jamming a needle in his ass in the, in the locker or in the bathroom in like 97, that it's probably more prevalent amongst competitive human beings perhaps even at the sporting level yeah no to a degree i think i saw people think people understand the risks that are involved with it um so i I don't know that you're seeing it quite as much as um you know as as maybe there's a thought to it i think if players are doing it they're probably smarter about it um i think they're they're smarter about their diet and everything they're putting in their body eating but no there's no doubt that it's as sophisticated as it's ever been and it's i think helping you know, players play longer. It's helping them get faster, stronger. Um, but, you know, we're seeing a lot of injuries. I mean, look at, you know, Monday Night Football this past week. It was oh, tough it was to awful. see. Now, you know, so, some of those are contact. Obviously, that's going to happen. Some are non-contact. But, um, you know, that's that's part of it, too. Bigger, faster, stronger. If that keeps, you know, going that way, that's, it's more of what you get. Like, your body can only handle and absorb so much. Like, I remember seeing guys who were injury prone and thinking, good God, they're so explosive. Um, like how, how are their ligaments and joints going to be able to hold up? You know, like I, I can yeah. see why they would have a non-contact injury because they're naturally built that way. Or if they were taking stuff, like it's just hard for your body. Um, you know, it's like putting a car with so much horsepower that you don't have the brakes to be able to get to make a stop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like putting a, an engine on my son's scooter. You know, it's going to be, it's going to end up in a train wreck. Uh, all right, let's take a break. And when we come back, we will actually stick to Debo's rundown. The goal of this podcast was to break Debo's soul and to expose him, uh, you know, as a, as a Philadelphia sports fan with all the Ben Simmons drama going around. Did you see what Ben Simmons was suspended for, by the way? Uh, I did not. 
Um, I did he, see he was Joel suspended Embiid's because comments. he's been mentally and physically. Uh, what was the line, Diva? It sounded like it was like something my wife had accused me of during not, uh, not engaging is how they described it. <laughs> Basically, he's got suspended for practicing with his phone in his pocket. It wasn't a phone in his pocket. Oh, what? But no, it was a practice jersey. But oh. so he, uh, Doc Rivers asked him to do a defensive drill. He said no. He asked him again. He said no again. And then he said, Ben, you should leave. And Ben left. Mm. I mean, does, does he want to play there or not? Like, my understanding was, like, they were working back towards an agreement, and then now no, he's, like, he practicing with, like, a cell phone in his pants and all that. Like, I, I don't get it. He does not want to be there. But he wants to be paid, but it, by him not engaging, he's getting fined. So it's a, it's a tough spot. Yeah. Tough, tough spot for the Philadelphia 76ers. But we out here. You know what I'm saying? Debo, we out here. I hear you, Brady. That's right. Uh, Every once in a while, when Debo gets drunk, you can hear him on Instagram. He'll actually like you'll hear his accent come out. You know, every once in a while, it's not very often though. Yeah, yeah. Fo follow me, everybody. Yeah, uh, what's what's your Instagram handle? I don't uh, e underscore my last name. Oh gosh, I was just thinking of a story too. Maybe, I, we, should, uh, maybe we should change your uh, your social handles to uh, Debo Pick Six, so people really know who you know. <laughs> All right, let me let me tell a quick story. So okay. um um I, I don't I don't even have like the Instagram application on my phone. I, I hate social media. Every once in a while I have to log on and do some stuff or whatever. And I actually had it on my phone because we had to promote something. So I downloaded the app, got on, threw it out there, and that was it. But after I didn't delete it, I like left it on there for a minute. So I get a notification, I got a message, and it's from a lady who bought our old house. And I was like, all right, this is odd. I guess we had some like mail or whatever that was coming there. Um, but it was just like, then you kind of went down that wormhole of like, all right, like, who is this person? You're just like, oh, wow. Okay. Did not expect that. Did, did not expect uh, what exactly uh, was happening uh, with the individual that's now living in my old house. So it was a, uh, a very odd, odd situation. And like, I didn't want to like continue the conversation. I was like, oh, okay, please send me this address. Thank you. That was it. Uh, I will forward you the tag when I get a moment to do so. Uh, and right. then you can, you can, you know, take a look at what you think about that. So. All right. I like it. Uh, all right. So let's get to these divisions. We'll go through them pretty quickly. This is Diva. Diva's rundown. It's like, we're, this is, this is what we're going to do on the show. And then we did the entire first half of the show and that didn't do one of them. Uh, such is life. But some of these are kind of easy. These are division winner prices. And Brady and I will try and figure out if there are any decent bets on here uh, for each of the divisions. These are at Caesars, of course. We'll start with the AFC East, where the Buffalo Bills suffered their second loss. But I feel fine about the Bills' future because the Patriots are in second place in that division at 2-4. and four. And Josh Allen pointed out that last year they lost going into the bye and came out and won the rest of their games. And he seemed very confident that this team will bounce back. Their schedule is easy. They are minus 2,000 to win the division. I cannot... The Patriots are 12 to one Dolphins, 30 to one and the Jets, 150 to one. I cannot envision a bet on this, on this division. And I do think the bills are still the best team in the AFC. I don't think it's even close. Uh, I think it'd be hard to imagine a scenario where, I mean, maybe if Josh Allen gets hurt, but even with the weapons, the team and, and the way Trubisky looked at a short stint and preseason, I, I probably think they still would win the division at that point. So uh, not placing any bets. There's just no value in the bills at minus 2000. Um, sorry to say that for uh, all you uh, Dolphins, uh, Jets, and Patriots fans, but that's just the reality of it. Uh, no value there whatsoever. Yep. No value whatsoever. Bills good. Other teams bad. The AFC North might present a little bit of value. The oh, Ravens, yeah. Ravens at five and one or minus 260. Your Cleveland Browns. Three plus three seventy five, man. They are banged up as hell. The Bengals ten well, to one. And yeah, let's just get into it. And then the Steelers are plus eighteen hundred. So, the the weird thing is, is the Browns and Steelers are tied right now for the division. They both sit at three and three. I have no idea, and especially as banged up as the Browns are, why you wouldn't just go with the Steelers. There's much better value there. They still have a roster that I think can surprise you by the end of the season. Uh, they they haven't played great at all by any means. Like I, I don't even know if they played good this year. And then plus they had, they had a young, off, you know, young offensive line. We knew that was going to be a work in progress. If they start picking things up, like they might actually slide right into that spot where you say, okay, I, I just laid down, you know, a hundred bucks and look what I'm netting back. So well, and, 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 
It went importantly, the Steelers haven't played the Ravens yet, which is right. bad because the Ravens are good, but it's good because you can take in theory, you can knock off two games off that, off that Ravens lead immediately with those two games. Yeah. And I think you, you also can hedge there, right. And you can actually play the favorite and play the Steelers and you're going to come out on top regardless, no matter what. Um, the other thing I would do is though, I'd, I'd place a little money on the Bengals. I yeah. Mean, they're, they're sitting in second place. Um, and so why not? They played really well. They've, Got some budding pieces. Um, and so I think there's value there at, at 10 to 1 uh, or plus 1,000. So why not? Um, I think, honestly, you could hedge your bet, throw a little money on both Steelers, Bengals. Your, your net coming back would be fantastic compared to uh, the Ravens. So uh, at that point, you know, you have to be careful about how much you lay down. But, again, there's enough value there to make sense for that sort of bet where you're going to come out winning regardless. Yeah, I don't mind. Uh, now, the thing about the Bengals bet is the Bengals play the Ravens this week. So you have to, I mean, you just have to be cognizant that if the Ravens win and the Ravens, I believe it's in, it's in Baltimore. If the Ravens win, then you're, you're not, you're not going to like your 10 to one bet. <laughs> so it's the problem. Yeah. Cause it's going to drop yeah, like mean, 25. You, to you, you have to feel good about where the Bengals are at bottom line. You yep. have to feel good about where the Bengals are at. The fact that the, the Ravens, even though they dominated on the scoreboard, the chargers, I think you saw some weaknesses, right? For sure. Uh, at least offensively with the way they played. So you have to be all in on the Bengals at that point because of how this, this week's going to work out. Yeah. Well, I guess my point is if, if you want to potentially wait, if you think the Ravens win this week, you can, you, you can wait a week, wait and a the week. Problem is you're not going to get the same value, but if you think, well, you're not going to get the, if you think the Bengals are going to win. Value. Yeah. Oh, Oh, it'll be like, it'll be three you to one. At now. Best. Yeah. Right. You bet it now. Exactly. Uh, okay. Moving to the AFC South, the Titans with their win over the bills move to minus 400. Can't bet that the Colts are three. I mean, you can, but you're it's, no get, get to it. Keep going. Keep going. The Colts are three to one. The Jaguars are 80 to one. And the Texans are 150 to one. Uh, I mean, lay some money on the Texans. Why not? Right. No, like, uh, stop it. <laughs> they lost I'm by kidding. 60. I'm kidding. Yeah. I just saying like, you don't see that almost ever and there's no shot. So it's you know, week, this one's it's tough week for me. six Brady and they're 150 to one to win the division. <laughs> in the, in this, <laughs> <laughs> this this one to me, I think the only way you lay a bet here is the Colts, and that's because of how Carson Wentz has played the last few weeks. He's taking better care of the football. They seem to be coming along. Um, you've got plus value there, but that's the only one that makes any sense. Jaguars, Texas have no shot, and there's obviously no value with the Titans at, at minus four hundred. So I think you could find better bets to make in other divisions. I agree with that. The Colts and the Titans play in two weeks. And if the Titans win that game, this division is more or less over because they'll have that tiebreaker. Uh, and of course they'll extend their lead. The Colts are two games back. I would probably like a little bit more than three to one. Uh, maybe five to one would be nice for that Colts, but I, but I agree that is the only available bet in that division. The AFC West may, however, offer some value. The chiefs. Oh yeah. Kansas City oh, yeah. and Patrick Mahomes, who, mind you, are in dead last, tied with the Denver Broncos at three and three, but just one game back of the Los Angeles Chargers. Well, one and a half because the Chargers currently hold the tiebreaker over them. The right. Chiefs are plus 110 to win the division. The Chargers That's plus 140, saying. Raiders 8 to 1, and th Broncos 13 to 1. As I said on some show over the last 48 hours or some podcast, go back to Chiefs. <laughs> Right? You have to. You have to. It's plus Andrew. money. Plus odds for the Chiefs, as bad as their defense has been, as much as they turn the football over. Are you serious? You have to play the Chiefs here. It's a no brainer for me at plus 110. Uh, unless you're in love with Justin Herbert and the Chargers, okay, I, I could maybe see that argument. But I just think you can get the Chiefs now at plus 110. You're never the rest of the season. I don't think these odds are going to get any better or more in favor for you. You're only going to start seeing minus odds. So you might not you see might this as well. for the. You might not see this for the rest of Mahomes' career. Like, I mean, this... uh, that's a little over the top. A little over the top. Okay. Because his I mean, career, we, we think he's always going to be at the Chiefs, but you never know. No, no, I, mean, I know. I'm just saying that, like, getting the Chiefs at plus money to win the division when they're one and a half games back of the Chargers and still have to play the Chargers is a good value. The Chiefs' schedule is not it's, – it's a little odd. So they're at the Titans this week, and then Monday Night Football, they host the Giants. You would think that's two and two, but you know, worst case, one and one. Host the Packers the week after that, 
at the Raiders the week after that on, I think, Sunday night football. And then they have the Cowboys and Broncos at home over the next six games. I, I mean, if I were if I were scheduling out the Chiefs, I would probably say worst case four and two there. Yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds like, about right. Like they'll, you know, maybe they split I, with the I, Packers in the, in the. I just think I think you have to look at the fact that they're a game and a half back and they played awful. Like this actually might be. I think it's is this fair to say that it's the worst stretch of football with Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, Absolutely. and the Chiefs since he's gotten there. Like this has been the worst stretch of football they've played. He's already thrown more interceptions than what the past two seasons, damn near combined at this point. I mean, give it a few more games the way they're going right now, but it's it's the worst stretch they've had. And they're only a game and a half back, and you get plus odds here. It makes yeah. all the sense in the world. I don't think you even have to debate it any longer. Yeah, I don't either. I, I would say I'm gonna I'm just gonna keep pounding that. Like you keep please keep betting that. The NFC East, <laughs> Dallas Cowboys are minus eight hundred. The Eagles ten to one. WFTs thirteen to one, and the Giants. 40 to one. I have a difficult time. I guess maybe with Dak being in a walking boot after the final play of that Patriots game, you could find something to stab at here, but the Cowboys look so much better than all these other teams. I can't talk myself into betting on anything in this division. There's no value here whatsoever. Even if Dak's hurt, I, I still think they'll be able to overcome or, you know, just because of how bad everyone else is the giants and their start the Washington football team where they're at right now. I just, it's bad. And I feel bad because I know Debo's a big Eagles fan, you know, big Philly guy, but it's, uh, it's just, I'm not saying they're like hopeless or anything like that, but depending on how the rest of the season goes, which is essentially a trial for Jalen Hurts, you know, they could be looking for another quarterback next year. Um, and, and, you know, I, you know, with that fan base, knowing how it is, it, it's, it could go downhill quick. So. D- no Debo is actually not an Eagles right fan now. the rest of the year. He is a, uh, Anti Dolphins fan the rest of the year because <laughs> he wants that draft pick to be in the t- he wants the number one overall pick courtesy of the Dolphins he's having to get it. The by the way, you know what's the, crazy to me? Go, go go to the next division because okay. well, I was going to uh, say that even at ten to one and thirteen to one are not good odds because all both of their teams are three games back of first place, right. and all three teams that are not the Cowboys have a negative point differential. Differential, oh yeah, yep. that's big, big, uh, very big. big. Um. NFC North, the Packers minus 700, the Vikings six and a half to one, Bears 16 to one, and Lions 50 to one. That is way okay, too short. Okay. That's way too short for the Lions. Are, are the Lions and Texans that far apart? Oh, the Texans are much more likely to win their division than the Lions. I mean, the, maybe should lay a bet on the Texans, right? Like, that, I have that no could idea. be a Brady, Brady, that could be a typo. It could be 500 to one, and it's just a typo. Like, that, that would make okay. more sense. All right. I, I was going to say, like, I don't know if, if maybe it is a typo. Debo, if we double check, confirm this, because I, I was, I'm looking at going, uh, that is not worth even close to the value what it should be if you wanted to bet on the Lions, even though you'd be crazy to do so. I, I don't really see much value in this division either. Um, actually, I will say this about the Vikings. If, actually, uh, confirmed. That, it is. It is in fact a typo. It's five hundred to one. Okay, thank you. That makes way more sense. All right, <laughs> For, forget that. Uh, just delete this from the it, podcast. It, we even had this conversation. In fairness to Debo, it would seem to be impossible. It's a lot of zeros. Five hundred. A lot one. of zeros. He's five hundred one six weeks into the season to win the division. That is insane. Maybe you lay the bet then. Uh, no. So the Vikings. Defense is playing better. Um, I mean, I guess you could say there's some value there. I just, I don't know. I don't see anyone taking over the Packers right now. I mean, Rodgers seemed to got his mo- mojo back after whatever the hell happened week one. And um, I don't know. It's, it's not worth any value there on this play. I think there's, you know, maybe some better value uh, as we get to some of the other NFC divisions. This is not that one. Yep, I agree. And if you look at the – now, here would be the one argument. The Packers have the Washington football team this weekend – then play at the Cardinals on a short week. So that's kind of a look ahead spot a little bit for them and for the Cardinals. And then have the Chiefs in Arrowhead the following week, the Seahawks, and then at Vikings and Rams at home. Golly. If you're going to make the, I think they'll beat Washington pretty handily. Well, I'm you, just saying, I, I mean, like I said, it's a look ahead spot, but I, I think real- about this. Think about this last week of games. Eight of the 13 before the primetime games before Monday football were double digit blowouts. Yep. I mean, it was a bad weekend for the NFL in regards to parity. And then if you want to say like the average margin of victory is usually three or four points, 
I want to say there was another three games that were basically like six points or more as far as the margin of difference. I mean, it just – it was not a competitive week of football. It was an awful week of football. There's some of that too uh, maybe coming up here the next couple of weeks. you got some of those matchups. So, I, I don't know. I, I mean, again, I'm not – I'm not betting it's the Packers. Uh, no, 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 no. Don't bet against the Packers. Yeah. Right. And if Debo points out to me that the Vikings have the hardest remaining schedule in the NFL. So really there's not a bet there. Let's keep moving. The NFC South. Also probably no value here as well. The Bucks are minus 650. The Saints are plus 575. The Panthers 24 to 1 and the Falcons 50 to 1. I believe instead of asking if there's value, I'll just point out that I hope everyone listening to this podcast that gambles has a wager on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to win the NFC South because I screamed it over and 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 over again before the season that anything less than minus 250 was a good bet, and it looks like it is in great shape. It, uh, and by the way, what were the odds preseason for that? Uh, I got it minus 165. There you go. I, yeah. And that's where, I mean, I think knowing all the change you're going to be having in New Orleans, knowing or not really knowing what was going to happen with Sam Darnold, which – sort of up hot. Now he's kind of regressed back to maybe some of that play in the Jets. I think the Falcons are the most disappointing team, to be honest with you. For I sure. Mean, that, they're just awful. So, again, not Robert really has a, been a little here. Bit, it's been a little bit better the last few weeks, but they're still – I mean, unless, unless you want to risk 650 bucks to win 100, sure, go do it. But, you're, I mean, it's always a guaranteed thing. I mean, yeah. it's guaranteed you're going to get that money back. Um, I mean, that's the only thing is that if you don't mind that sort of return, if you're, like, willing to say – yeah, I'll risk seven hundred, you know, bucks for the Packers to get back a hundred, or six fifty to get back a hundred. Like that's fine if you got that sort of money to do that with. Like that's not a bad ROI. Um, no, but but it means it also means that you've got to take. I mean, let's say you wanted to do, let's say you're really rich and you wanted to win ten thousand dollars. Or I mean, not really rich, but you have seventy grand to go take to a casino and plop down on the Packers to win ten grand. You're also putting seventy grand with a casino for the next cut, like four months which you know just right yeah your 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 irr you know is, is gonna be driven down a little bit by that but yeah. the reality is it's still at it's least a good bet too right it's a good bet it's a good investment if you you know feel strongly about those teams on the other side of that bet yeah uh, okay. and i don't know how many listeners have that sort of disp- disposable income you're talking about i don't know um, how many yeah, hosts do either um <laughs> yeah i i was gonna look to see if you could do i don't ooh now they let you do this. So, oh, hello. So, okay. This, I can't believe this is correct, but Caesars on their website, you can parlay division futures. So we can bet on a hundred dollars. How the hell is this correct? It's saying right now, if I bet a hundred, oh, oh, I see it's You can bet bills, Packers, we get, put their bucks in there too, because it's a hundred dollars to win twenty bucks. That's not really great. Is there bucks in there? Bills, nice. Packers, Bucks, Cowboys. And what was, oh, Dallas Cowboys. That fourteen is, parlay uh, win so division. Parlay all four of those divisions. It is letting you do that. It's minus one seventy nine. I would bet that. Love that. Yeah, I would bet that. Yeah, I mean, Definitely. even if you're putting, um, let's say you put, uh, let's say you put down three hundred fifty eight dollars on it. And you'll get paid back five fifty seven. So you'll basically make two hundred dollars that way. If you had three, I would do that. I think I think those four teams are winning those divisions pretty handily. Yeah, All right. I'm with you on that. The real donkey division bet from Brady and Brinson. <laughs> um, okay. All right, let's so, get let's, let's get the NFC West because the NFC West is the one there's there's value. I think it could be interesting. It's the last one. Cardinals minus one twenty. Rams plus one forty. The 49ers. My preseason pick to win the Super Bowl. H. 12 to one to win the division and the Seahawks, the Russell Wilson, the Seahawks, 28 to one to win the division right now. A lot of value to me for the Rams. Like, I think this is a no brainer. Uh, I know they're not leading. I know the Cardinals look great, but you and I've talked about this before. I think our reservation with the Cardinals and it's, it has been always will be until they prove otherwise. It's just their ability to finish the season. Um, And so the Rams are what a game back. Is that right? They are one game game back. Cardinals undefeated Um, Rams. I guess they're a game and a half because they, the they lost to the Cardinals. We're game and a half because they lost to them, right? Yeah. So that's the only thing that you have to be kind of concerned by is if the Arizona Cardinals do hold strong and if they do kind of hold the momentum they've created so far, 
might be in some trouble. But to me, there's enough value there. And I think the Rams, the way they've played, you'd think they're only going to get better the longer Stafford's there and, and working with these guys. So I, I would I love that bet. I think at plus 140, the Rams are, are at you know, some solid value here. Because again, the more the more they play, it's only, you know, that's gonna go down. It's only gonna get worse from here. I agreed. And so let's just say well, actually, I'm going to ask you two questions about scheduling. Over the next two weeks, the Cardinals have the Texans, and then on Thursday, the Packers at home. Over the next two weeks, the Rams have the Lions at home and then at the Texans. I think there's a very good chance that we could see those two teams tied in first place, and at which point the Rams will be negative money. The Rams then right. play the Titans at home and then the 49ers on the road. The Cardinals play the 49ers on the road and the Panthers at home. So. I mean, the Packers are the the only. You know, the Forty ers will be tough because they're a division opponent. Kyle Shanahan's going to well, and Gra- Garoppolo will be back. Yeah, yeah. they yeah. always play. But like, off, yeah. but like the Packers being thrown in there is a significant issue for the Cardinals. And Kyler Murray's been a little dinged up. Man, they do have a. Ah, the Cardinals have an easy. Golly, the Cardinals have an easy schedule. At, at Seahawks, at Bears, Rams at home, at Lions, Colts at home, at Cowboys. Again, it's, it's, it's not so much about that because we've seen them get off to good starts and not finish. And they have like that Buffalo Bills moment where, I don't know how you felt on Monday night, but I'm watching it going, the Bills, the way they played, have no business letting the Titans hang around this game. And they did. And they either. couldn't tackle Derrick Henry. And, you know, you saw how the game ended. Like, that's one of those, that's one of those things where you, you just go, like, like, I don't know what the odds are for Kansas City to win, you know, the AFC, but I would bet it because every single time you think Buffalo is about ready to overcome or like take over them, they have a game like that. And you go, oh, but there's that one game like that. And it kind of was scarring to me. I can't get out of the back of my mind. The Cardinals are like that, too. There's going to be a game they lose. We go, how the hell they lose to that team? Like the Tennessee Titans. You probably say about the Titans. They lost to the Jets. They lost to the Jets. That's all the Jets only win this season. And you're not saying to yourself, like, wait, the Titans are, are probably going to win the AFC South, yet they lost to the Jets? Beat the so, Bills, lost to the Jets. What are we doing? Yeah. Uh, I, I, just, but, I think if you if you look at it that way, like, that's that's my reservation with the Cardinals, is until well, we see them finish the season strong, you might as well bet on the Rams. And, and here's another pretty good piece of evidence, in my opinion, that on why you should bet on the Rams. If you go to, William, if you go to Caesars, excuse me, and you want to bet on Super Bowl odds, odds to win the Super Bowl or odds to win the NFC, the Rams are eight and a half to one to win the Super Bowl and four to one to win the NFC. The Cardinals are 11 to one to win the Super Bowl and plus 525 to win the NFC. In other words, Caesars, AKA Vegas, values the Rams more long term. And yet the Cardinals right. are favored to win the division because they have that head to head matchup. So I, I'm with you. I think we're, we're in lockstep here. We've got two uh, stone cold Alaskan pipeline locks. That we want right. the uh, blue steel, yeah. blue steel pipes. Yeah. That's right. Ice cold. I heard that once. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I heard that once from O line coach. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, t- I'll tell that to you off, uh, off the podcast. <laughs> I don't think I can say it. All right. So our three bets on the divisions are Packers, Bills, Bucks, Cowboys, uh, division winner, LA, minus yeah. 179, two units there. Now, Brady and I are not in legal gambling states, so we're not actually placing this, but if we were, yeah. we would. And I can't do any parlaying of division winners where I am. But I will be betting the Chiefs because I already bet them at minus 125 a few weeks ago. And I will be betting the Rams because I'm a big yeah. Rams guy at plus 140. I think those two are really good bets at plus money. Well, hold on. So are, are you out of the Steelers? Are you out of the Steelers? That was oh, yeah, you had Steelers one? too. Um, no, but. You went through their schedule. Like, I'm just saying from a value standpoint, you can sprinkle a little bit, you know, a little, ten, hey, a little $10 bet. A little $10 yeah, bet. Yeah, I'll drop. Yeah. 10, 10 bucks to win uh, 180. 10 bucks, 180. Yeah. Yeah. I don't mind that. Yeah. Maybe even 25. I mean, there you go. Yeah, don't get too crazy now. Yeah. Don't get too crazy. Steelers, 80 to one to win the Super Bowl. Don't do that. Um, all right. That's it. That's the show. Brady Quinn Football Show. Again, happy birthday, mom. Have uh, Happy birthday, Mrs. Brinson. Thank you again for consuming. All right. See you, Brady. It's been fun. 